So my name is Kim. I've been drawing since I was a little kid, right? And I started doing digital art two, three years ago. And I'm mainly drawing anime girls. <laughs> so um, before I even get into teaching you guys this, I want to say that it is totally fine to do either digital art or traditional art. Both of them will teach you how to draw, right? It's just, I mean, difference is digital is digital. You know, you get to undo, have layers. So it gives you a lot of more freedom to do with your art. But the thing is, when you have a lot of freedom, you become lost, right? So say, for example, you're drawing on paper with ink and you make a mistake. You have to work around that. Well, in digital, you can do a lot of things, right? You can undo that, redo it, add different techniques, different brushes, different colors. It is boundless. So that can become overwhelming. So um, my main suggestion when doing digital art, just start from the basics, you know? Just draw like you would when you first pick up a paper and pencil and just draw. Now, as for hardware, you can have a display list tablet, which is much cheaper, right? So like, say like a Wacom Intuos. I, I recommend a Wacom Intuos Small if you're first starting out. It is around $50 when it goes on sale. And it's like $70 if it's not on sale. Now, this is if you're completely brand new into digital art and you just want to try it out, do it, right? If you want something, if you know that you're into digital art and you're going to be doing it for a while, then I suggest getting the cheapest um, reliable display tablet, which is the Artist 12 from XP Pen. This gives you a small screen about, um, I would say like 12 inches, but the display is actually nine inches. Now, the main difference I would say is the display, but also because when you have a display, when you draw um, with the picture right underneath your pen instead of on the screen that's separate, you don't have to undo like seven times you can undo three times. Like, let's say like, oh, I want to get that line perfect, right? Usually when it's without a display, you have to undo it seven times. Well, if the picture is right underneath you, you don't need to redo it as much. So a display is more expensive, but it is also more efficient, I would say. So you don't really need the most expensive equipment. Put your money in where you want it to be. You know, like, if you're first starting, just get a display list tablet. If you really want to get into it, get a display tablet. I myself, I own a Wacom 24 inch because I freaking love drawing. I really think that I'm going to keep doing this, so it's good to invest into something that you're going to love for years to come, right? So if you have the money, you have the passion, go for it. Get a giant screen, right? So again, it's all up to you. Nothing is better than the other. I've seen professional artists only use a display list tablet like an Intuos, completely fine, up to you. Moving on to software. I personally used Psy2 and moved on to Clip Studio Paint. There is no quote unquote best program. It depends on what money you have, what kind of interface you have, and what you want the program to offer. Sci2 is very painterly, very simple, so if you're starting off, try out Sci2. The base price is $50, right? Let me write this down. Um, Sci2, beginner, let me put down the stability. Sci2. Beginner painterly. What I mean by painterly, painterly is that doesn't really offer that many tools like um, Photoshop. 
So it really relies on the type of brushes you use. And it is $50. CSP is a love child between um, Sci2 and Photoshop. So it is very focused on drawing, like Sci2, but it also has some capabilities of Photoshop. And that I will go into more depth later, but basically it allows you to manu manipulate some layers like uh, Photoshop would, right? Well, Psy2 does not really have those tools. So this is also $50, but it often goes on sale to $25. Photoshop, Photoshop is a really, really good tool because it gives you a lot of options of your tools. It's not something you're going to be going in immediately, but later on, when you get into those tools, you will want to modify it to what you want it to be, right? So this is not really applicable to you guys, assuming that you guys are just going into it. So yeah, I would recommend Photoshop as a program, but it's not, necessarily something that you need quite yet. So I recommend Sci2 or CSP. Good alternatives are also Fire Alpaca. Um, I know Procurate is a program often used by iPad users. Uh, I don't remember the cost. I think $50, yeah. And there's also, what is it, Medibang? Ibis Paint, there's a lot of tools. Okay, Procreate is $10, all right. But yeah, I haven't used these tools, so I can't put any word into it, but generally speaking, all painting software offer similar capabilities, some more than others, uh, especially pertaining to photo manipulation, right, if you want to get really specific tools. So yeah, I hope that is clear for you guys. Now, actually, on to showing you guys the digital art. So, first of all, pens. You have basic uh, pen qualities such as size, right? You have opacity, which makes the pen lighter. You can make it overlap. And you have stabilization, which is a little bit more hard to explain. So stabilization is really good because if you want to have smooth lines, you can turn it up and you will have the program inter interpret what Dawson wants to connect. So if I have my stabilization at zero, right? Let's say like I want to make like a very fine detail, like a chain. You see how it gives like this a lot of like, wobbliness? Now if I turn up the stabilization to 20, the program smooths out what, is, what the wobbly or wobbliness is, right? So um, you don't want to have your stabilization up to 56 because it takes a very long time for the program to interpret. Oh, the software I'm using is Clip Studio Paint. This is the software I'm using right now. Generally, the interface will be similar for all of the software. It's just that some of them will have more utilities and options. So I know that Clip Studio Paint um, offers more capabilities on that side. Uh, personally, I recommend Clip Studio Paint because it is affordable and $25 for the whole pack and it offers a lot more than uh, free art programs. And the devs who make Clip Studio Paint, they often listen to user feedback and add more things like every few months, right? So it's really good. Yes, that is exactly right. You got it right. No problem. So, yeah, we also have more tools like you can adjust the, 
pressure of the pen. So say for example, I don't know if you'd be able to see this, but basically it brings up a graph. And if you want something to be affected by pen pressure, you can add that to it. So say like I want a pen to be darker, harder press, and I can also do that. In short, pens in digital art can be modified a lot. The shape of the pen can be modified, how much it leaks ink can be modified, everything, right? But my tip to beginner artists is to just stick with default pens. Don't modify them. Don't use custom pens yet. Feel comfortable in your skin first and then expand because if you get overwhelmed, you're going to get demotivated and you won't want to you know, touch digital art, right? So take it at, Take it slowly. One thing I want to bring up before I move on to the layers and the like is shortcuts. When you see people drying fast and they switch brushes, it's all because they use shortcuts, basically. So that's another re reason why I want you guys to use default brushes first, is to get used to shortcuts, and then you feel that digital art is fast, like in real life, how you can just pick up a pen and draw and pick up an eraser. You can just do that. One second, there you go. So let me show you guys some shortcuts. Control. And space drag, is zooming in. Shift, space, drag, is rotating. What really sucks is like I have all of this memorized by muscle memory, so it's really hard for me to actually um, say out loud what I'm doing. Uh, control, Alt, Drag is changing pen size, right? And then for letters, those are basically tools. So this is going to be overwhelming at first, but I highly recommend you guys to understand and memorize uh, the shortcuts because it makes everything so much easier in the long run, right? It's like, oh, I want to do this, and I can just you know, fill it in really easy, right? Or just switch to a different brush without having to click in different places. It makes digital art magical. So I highly recommend uh, practicing these shortcuts and getting used to them. So my interface is going to look a little bit wonky because right now I'm on my 4K tablet and the lettering is gonna be blurry. So I apologize about that, but I'll point to you guys what is here. So over here is the color wheel. This is where you're going to select your colors. And on the right of the color wheel, you have the preview, right? And below the preview is these layers. When you're doing digital art, do not be afraid to use layers at all. Highly encourage it. Make a new layer for every color, right? So let's say I make a line art right now. Right. Let's give her some hair. Give her like a little body. So general rule is to have a different layer for every color. So I'm going to make this my reference layer Basically what this does is it tells my other tools to, hey, use this layer as a reference. So when it uses the line art as reference, 
This basically tells the tools to limit yourself to these lines, right? So I make a line earlier. Good practice is also to name your layer. So I'll name this one liner. And then make a folder below the liner because all of these layers, these color layers will be below the liner. You will want the line art layer to show. When you do a layer below here, you see how you can draw over the line art and you bring the layer up above the line art layer, it covers up. Okay, so now on to coloring. You can always color by simply filling it in. But if you have good clean line art, you can use um, the bucket tool, for example, right? So in this case, I can use a bucket tool that refers to other layers and fill it in. Just like that. Now I do the same thing, repeated for the other layers. So say for her hair, I want it to be pink. And I want the shirt to be blue on a new layer. Let's make her mouth red. All right, so I have my colors in. Oh, also I want to emphasize that bucket tools have different options. So I have this thing called the close gap, which basically allows for your lines to not be closed, but it can still fill in, right? So say for example, I do something like this. Oops. And it's not gonna be filled in because I have a giant gap, but if I increase closed gap, it would be like, oh, hey, we still have these lines that are close together. So I'm just going to fill in up to here and close off, right? So it's really good if you have not great line art or like the small gaps that you forgot, you just fill in, it's totally fine. So onto coloring. Now there are several ways to shade in. You can lock opacity. And this allows you to draw on this layer without overflowing to be outside of that color. So I can do something like this. You can also make a new layer on top of that color, color layer and make it a clipping layer. So this does a similar thing, but all of the colors you add in here are not on the same layer, it is separate. So you could do something like this. So I can add like little blushes on her and still can't, um, still can't overflow out of the skin layer. But if I make it unclip, you see how the blushy leaves out? That's what it basically does. It clips this layer onto the layer below it. Personally, I use clipping layers over locking opacity because this allows you to modify the layers to different blending modes, right? And you can also erase what you didn't like about that layer. And then you basically do this for every layer that you come across. So sooner or later, you're going to see that, oh, I'm going to have a bunch of layers. At this rate, I'm already on eight layers. So it really helps for you to organize by using more folders. So I can make a folder and drag both of these layers into one folder and name it here. And you can do this indefinitely, basically. So you can have up to like, I don't know, 500 layers. It depends on how good your computer is and how big the file is. As long as you're not overwhelming your computer resources, it is fine to make as many layers as you want. One really cool tool I love about Clip Studio Paint is the vector layers. This is very useful for line art. 
So basically, any line that you make is a vector. So if I control and left click, you can see all these lines that pop up. This, this, this is what makes up a vector, right? And then you can move the lines individually. So if I don't like something, I can move, shift it up and down. I can also move the dots individually. Say like I want this line to be longer. Or I want this to go here. And one of my favorite thing is one of my favorite things is the vector eraser. So you have an eraser tool that can erase lines up to the intersection. So it can have very, very clean line art. Um, something important I want to tell you guys about line art is to not use an opacity that's lower than 100. Always keep the opacity at 100. If you use a tool that has lower opacity, get to it. Oh, well, let me just do this. and you want to color underneath, it's just not going to look as good, right? And then you're going to have lines that overlap. Let's say I'm going to do a liner with low opacity. It gives less uniformity because it gives um, your grays and blacks more variation. And when you color underneath it, it changes the liner. So it looks messy. It adds a lot of um, variation, which you don't really want in a clean piece of liner. But again, right, this depends on uh, what your art style is. So I can't say you cannot totally do this. It's still totally up to you. But if you do want clean liner, it is um, preferable for you to use 100% opacity. And one trick that I want to show you guys that's really cool is say, say that you have a lot of layers, right? And you want to immediately get to the hair layer, for example, instead of having to look through them and find the hair layer. What you can do is control shift. Wait, is that one second? I can't remember my own um, shortcuts. Yeah, okay. It's, short, it's control shift left click, right? And say I want to go to hair layer. Click on here, I'm already on it, right? You wanna to go to skin, click on the skin, and you see how it shifts onto the skin layer automatically. Basically, it takes that pixel and it's like, oh, what's the overlaying pixel? I want to go to that layer, so it does it for you. So that's really important. It also helps if you leave a random spec somewhere. You can always control left, um, control shift left click, and then you can erase it, just like that. Now, um, one thing I would like to go over by colors is digital artists give off the illusion that they know a lot about color theory. <laughs> what I mean by that is you can use a lot of neat tricks to make your drawing pop out. For example, I can make a clipping layer. Let's make it entirely pink. I hope this works. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's cute. But yeah, this is my Axelon OC. She's a little kid. I'm planning on making comics about her. She's adorable. 
Oh, how many pass? Yes, on D7. Okay. Oh, uh, already, she already has a name. Her name is Axie. I also have a turtle and um, a frog. So yeah, see how you can change the blending modes on top of the layers. And it gives your colors a cool effect, right? So in this case, I put a clipping layer on top of the folder that has all of the colors. So it overlays this pink over all of the color layers. So you can see how different layers have different effects. Now, if I lower the opacity of these layers, you can see the original and you can see the effect of the layer. So screen basically lines the whole thing. Color dodge basically dodges more vivid colors, I think. Yeah, it washes out colors that are more grayed out. Glow dodge, same thing, but with a more vivid light. So it sees the parts that are already light, brightens brain, them up really quickly, right? While retaining the darker parts. So yeah, a lot of these things, uh, not uh, digital artists, they don't know which one is best off, right, um, off the bat, right? Which is the beauty of digital art, or art in general, to be honest. You try whatever looks right, and you apply it. And over time, you build up this li library of knowledge, right? Because I went into this not knowing what layers are, what layers to use, and just experiment. Just, just wake up one day and be like, man, I want to try out, I don't know, Glow Dodge to see what it does. So all of these things you learn bit by bit. It is never immediate, right? Besides layer properties, he can also do, let me see where it is, layer, new correction layer, tone curves. This is one of my favorites. Um, can't really show it to you guys on this piece, so I'm going to pull a more, um, a more soft shaded piece. One second. This piece is really bright, but this is all I have, right? So you can see that oh, she has a lot of like soft shading here and there. And we can use that. Layer, new correction layer, tone curve. Can you guys see the tone curve of Fox at all? No, you can't. Let me share my whole screen if I can. Change windows. All right. So I'm assuming that you guys can now see the tone curve, which is this box right here. And what you can basically do is modify the mid-tones, the lighter tones, and the darker tones. So this is the lighter tone. So if you drag this down, you can make the entire image more dark. Right? And if you drag it down the middle, it brings the mid-tones down while keeping the lighter parts still light. The same thing can be applied with colors. You want her to be less red. <laughs> Overall, you can do this. Or you can like modify it in like specific places, you know? Say like I can do something like this. Do wacky curves and it brings out certain colors that, you, that you, really, you really didn't think about before, right? So this overall makes her a lot more vivid. All 
Right, so you can do cool stuff like that where you just modify it. And some more things, some tools I would like to show you is the magic wand tool, which basically selects a color. It's a good selection tool, right? So say that you already merged your line art and all of the color layers. Now, what you could do is use the magic wand tool and just select. Let me switch back to my actual screen share so you guys can see closely what's happening. Okay, so say that this picture is already merged and I just want to select the chest area, right? So I can use the magic wand tool and click on it. Oh, it's on referred layers. Let me do editing layer. So you see how it only selects the widest part of the area. Now you can also adjust the color margins of the magic wand tool. So if you increase color margin, it will select colors that are more close to the color that you're clicking on. So I increase my color margin by that much. It will also include the pinks that are near the skin color because the pinks are similar to the skin color. Now if I increase a bit more, it's also going to include that darker tone, right? And it stops at the line art. Or sometimes it even includes the line art because it sees the line art as similar to the the colors around it. Similarly, you can, you can also have a closed gap option on the wand tool, much like the Becca tool I showed you guys earlier. So yeah, these tools are very customizable to your wants and needs. And I do not expect any of you guys to know all of this in one go, right? This is things that you learn over time. So don't be overwhelmed, do not be motivated if you feel like, oh, it's too much to me, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Digital art is a lot of fun. When you get used to it, it is a bit to get used to. But that investment is worth it because you don't have to spend time and money on tools like copy uh, markers or like watercolor, right? You can experiment a lot of things. You can learn color theory from modifying these layers and applying uh, different layer properties, like tone curves that I just showed.